Barcodes are a staple of nearly every retail store imaginable. Plus, most warehouses and shipping companies use them to track item purchases, inventory, and code location data, ID numbers, and other data components. They are so common that they have become nearly unnoticeable, but most have no idea that barcodes are a relatively recent development that was initially invented to track railroad cars across the United States. Most barcodes at retail stores are what are considered linear barcodes, which are a series of lines and spaces. However, there are also 2D barcodes that incorporate other geometric shapes such as squares and rectangles. The QR codes which have become popular on smartphones and tablets are a development of these 2D barcodes. The barcode was first invented in 1951 and patented in the United States by Norman Woodland and Bernard Silver. The inventors were heavily inspired by Morse code, which had long been used in telegraph applications and military applications to transmit communications via a series of dots and dashes. Like many inventions, it took many years for the concept to really take hold. Most don't know that one of the first applications for the barcode was on U.S. freight railroads in the late 1960s. Essentially, this early railway system involved placing a placard on the side of rail cars with a barcode, which constituted an ID number. As railroad cars entered and exited rail yards and other railway facilities, the scanners would scan the cards and provide railway operations teams with information on what cars were where, which made for a vastly improved car sorting and car tracking ability. This early system proved to be highly unreliable. One common reason for the mistaken car scans or errors in scanning was due to dirt covering or partially obscuring the lines. Finally, in the mid-1970s, many railroads started to heavily adopt the system. However, there were still issues with reliability. The entire system was replaced in the 1980s by a type of system that used radio ID tags. These did not have the same downfalls as a visual scanning system. Keep in mind there are hundreds of thousands of railway cars operating on trains just in North America. Over time they get dirty, banged up, and there's little motivation to keep them perfectly clean in order for a visual scanning system to maintain effectiveness. Hence the necessity to switching to RFID tags made much more sense. Another early application involved a toll booth operating company wanting to be able to better track monthly pass holders which traveled across a bridge. The United States Postal Service also expressed interest in tracking trucks and trailers entering their facilities. Finally, in 1973, the Uniform Grocery Products Code Council decided to develop a standardized form of barcodes that could be printed onto store packaging. The first actual food product to have a barcode was chewing gum in 1974. It took until 1981 for more widespread adoption following the U.S. Department of Defense adopting a type of barcode to catalog all military equipment. While barcodes are still nearly standard across all forms of business, train and freight shipments also rely heavily now on GPS-based tracking, with freight companies able to track where a truck is via GPS signal from the driver's smartphone. Even tech-based companies such as Amazon, however, still use barcodes on every single shipment that enters and exits their warehouses. When an FBA seller sends inventory to an Amazon facility, it must have on it an Amazon-provided barcode label that contains a barcode which is scanned as it enters the warehouse. This tells Amazon's computer system that a particular seller's products are now available for shipment. Inventory that leaves the warehouse to buyers is also tracked in this manner. In this case, the scanning system communicates with the warehouse management system, which are software systems that are designed to track inventory levels across stores and within warehouses. Barcode readers themselves still use a photo sensor that is either in a handheld unit or directly hooked into a computer system. In short, the light reflected back into the scanner causes it to experience a series of pulses that relate to the white and black stripes. This generates a binary code which is translated in the attached computer. Many scanners now have a series of photo cells that don't require you to actually move the scanner over the code. Most scanners you see at self-checkout stations, for example in a Walmart, take this even a step further. These scanners use a laser which is faster and much more accurate. Laser scanners typically have a rotating lens or rotating mirror which allows the object that is being scanned to be stationary while moving the beam across the target area. There are also photo-based barcode readers. For example, when you scan a QR code on your smartphone, the software interprets the image. This is an example of photo-based readings. In the logistics industry, barcode scanning of various types is incredibly important to track inventory in nearly all warehouses. Much like the Amazon example, even small businesses and importers generally use some sort of scanning equipment to track what products or raw materials are leaving or entering their warehouses. Without the use of barcode scanning, cataloging incoming and outgoing freight or preparing inventory orders would take much longer and be much less efficient. Over time, as computer systems and dashboard inventory systems have become more popular and affordable, 
Barcode scanning systems have become even more integrated with other systems that provide wide-ranging analytics covering anything from sales velocity to return numbers. More videos are coming along very soon from Zmodal.